Tell us about Mark Fancourt. Oh, well, a career, I consider myself a career hospitality professional. Um, I started in the industry way back in the, in the 80s at this point, and um, at the time when Australia had been discovered by the Japanese tourists. And a lot of uh, investment was going into hotel and resort development in Australia, and my home state of Queensland uh, needed to have a workforce uh, that could support that industry along with Expo 88, which happened uh, also in the late 80s in, in Brisbane. So I ended up going to a purpose-built hospitality school in Brisbane and um, you know, really enjoyed it. My father at the time was um, you know, the head of uh, marketing for, for a company called Dreamworld, which is the biggest theme park in Australia at the time. And you know, I was coming up towards the end of school and he said to me, well, what are you thinking about for the future? And, and he said, had you thought about the hospitality industry? And um, off I went and I ended up at hotel school, did very well, um, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the idea of industry. And, and you know, certainly everything I learned there was the formulation of what happened after that, so naturally, lots of hotels and resorts were being opened in Queensland at the time, and and you know, at a very early age, I got to open, you know, open a property straight out of hotel school with Hyatt, uh, then with 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 ITT Sheraton at the time, and uh, on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, um, and then I went um, to back to Brisbane um, at a time where two pivotal things in my career happened. One was um, a company called Beaufort Hotels, which was, uh, Siggy Bile was the, the head of a you know, storied hotelier. And we opened a hotel in Brisbane called The Heritage, which was considered to be six star at the time. And it was there where I first became exposed to Fidelio. Um, you know, this is in the, in the late 80s and we had, uh, we had, you know, this will sound funny now for, for hoteliers, but at that time we had um, a PMS, Fidelio, with six interfaces. And the whole hotel was butler serviced and the guests would arrive on the floor and there was pager interfaces and they would meet the guests out of the lift and, you know, all sorts of things that, um, that today seem so... Uh, so de rigueur, but then it was, you know, it was really leading edge. And of course, Fidelio at that stage was still very young. And uh, I was with the, with the property for, for quite some time. It was one of the best hotels in Australia at the time. And, uh, and anyway, after that, through my Fidelio background, I ended up working around a lot of the properties and hotels and resorts that, um, that took on Fidelio. Um, so I ended up in the country at a country resort in Queensland that was a uh, you know, very high-end property, very golf and equestrian driven at the time. And then after that, I ended up joining uh, Qantas or Australian resorts as it was at that time before Qantas took them over to work on the, the Great Barrier Reef at um, Great Keppel Island, which, you know, I, 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 was, I ran the airport in that role as, as well as running, you know, the room side of the business there. And um, anyway, I got a phone call from Mike Ferrier, for those who, who, who know Mike, saying, you know, don't you think it's time you came and joined us at Fidelio? And I did, and that turned into being, you know, a huge, a huge juncture of change in my what career. What year was that? Uh, 95. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I joined Fidelio then, and I was with them for the better part of the next 10 years. and. Um, you know, led the led the front office product in, in in Australasia, and then I went on to what was the foundation pieces of what became Opera. So, the company uh, purchased um, company in, in Naples, in Florida, which is still where you know Opera gets developed today. But um, called Executive Technologies, which had which had this enterprise platform, which encompassed in essence, the early days of CRM or customer information, central reservation systems and PMS, all in a single platform. And we took, that was the, the foundation of a product on Oracle, which we then took as Fidelio and we took that, the, the enterprise products, the, the central reservation system, 
the, the global customer information system and eventually the earliest days of, of e-commerce um, to the global market. And, and through that, we, we managed to pick up all of the middle tier, um, you know, high-end operators. And this was, a, at the time, extremely cutting edge. You know, we had full two-way interfaces for, for all the inventory profiles globally around the world with almost real-time information, at least as close as you could get at that point in time with full preference sharing. You know, people are doing this only now in, in certain other parts of industry in you know, 2020s. We were doing this in, in the late 90s. And at that time, I ended up working with, you know, I, I went from working with hotels to working with hotel groups, and it changed my whole vision for what mattered about technology and, and through that role it really formulated everything that came on to pass for me. Um, but it was a, you know, it was amazing times. We, we, we had, you know, any, any, any hotel name that you know today that, that, that is a brand that's renowned, we had Four Seasons, Amman Resorts, Oberoi, Peninsula, you know, uh, Kempinski, you know, all of these companies we sort of captured in, in sort of a five to ten year period in the market, which exploded, you know, the, 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 the Fidelio and then Opera deployment. But would as you a say result. the market was kind of ripe at that time as well? Yeah. Like it was yeah. there to be taken, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, at that time, sort of HIS, which was a, a huge player, was on the wane. Um, you know, some of the other products that had been out there for a long time were on the wane because they were still largely. You know, green screen mainframe technology and you know we were coming along with um, you know, you know color based you know PC driven graphical user interfaces which of course as we know even today you know is still the, a, a picture is worth a thousand words and we painted a pretty picture back in those days and but you know the most exciting thing about that was we were bringing enterprise, uh, you know, booking capability and enterprise customer information, which eventually moved into loyalty to hotel groups that up until then really had to work with the utels of the mm. world or, you know, the, or, or the trusts or so on. Well, all of a sudden they started to control their own distribution. And eventually the larger scale customs had direct connections out to the GDS and, you know, it really changed the whole nature of what a hotel management company and brand could do to drive their own brand. You know, at that point, the only companies that really had such a thing was, was well, to use today's term, Marriott, um, Sher ITT Sheraton slash Starwood, uh, IHG, um, you know, which even then was, you know, that was still Holiday Inn and, and Intercontinental. But these, if you weren't on that scale, you didn't have the ability to have your own distribution platform. So this was a massive shift for the industry and extremely exciting times. And I also took on the revenue management uh, solutions for the company as well at that time where we'd acquired a company called um, Opus 2 or Top Line Profit was the product which Eric Orkin, who you know, is considered to be one of the founders of modern revenue management technology um, you know, we, we acquired that product because of their relationship with Starwood at the time. So the, the exposure for me of what was really leading edge technologies at that point in time really sort of pushed my whole thought process of visibility, uh, appreciation and, and, and future approach on technology ahead a long, long way um, because of the opportunity to be involved with those things. So. So, um, you know, I did that for quite some years and, and, and then I, I left, um, you know, Micros Fidelio and I went and did a startup based on uh, enterprise resource planning technology for finance, which um, again, you know, enterprise technology, it sort of made sense coming out of what I'd been doing at Micros Fidelio. Anyway, and then not too long after that, um, uh, I, I joined Pan Pacific Hotels and Resorts, who had been one of my customers uh, in my Marcos Fidelia days, to to basically pick up that enterprise platform and the rest of their technology environment and sort of take them into the future, um, 
with technology, which, you know, I did, um, you know, over an eight year period, went through a merger and acquisition in that time, launched the Global Hotel Alliance at that time, which took all of that enterprise technology up to a different level again. And we were distributing through multiple hotel companies with membership programs above the hotel companies, sub, you know, subsidiary membership programs. Again, which, you know, it, it, these were not things that people were really doing in technology at that time. Um, yeah, I, I really got into, um, you know, um, the automation of service at that point in time. That became one of my huge drivers in terms of, you know, what I call point of service technology and the ability for the customer to be served, you know, where where the customer is as compared to bringing them to a point of sale environment where we as the hospitality operators were. So I embraced Wi-Fi very early. You know, I, I um, took on voice over IP technology very early. We, we changed a lot of things about how the guest room worked and a lot of our staff were fully mobile yet fully connected on sort of campus wide Wi-Fi environments and sort of really shifting the operational model um, Leveraging technology, which you know, allowed the brand to lift the profile of all of the properties in their various markets, as sort of TripAdvisor and the likes came came into the market through that period. And what I learned was that through the combination of technology and current technology, you really could lift the overall performance of the business uh, to a market leading status. And that was a that was a really big lesson for me. And, 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 you know, having worked that program over time and, and built a model, a, a, a management model, model and a performance model to monitor our progress over years, I was able to see that hotels that adopted the technology model that we wanted them to have ultimately became the best hotels from the customer's perspective in the group. And that was a really interesting learning process. And what it taught me was that you know, in the hospitality industry back in the 2000s and, you know, where people were still essentially saying, wow, you know, technology isn't that important. Technology was fundamentally important. And, and through the smart adoption of technology and the, you know, disciplined approach to the model, the deployment, the asset management of it, we made a huge difference to the business, both from a customer perspective but also from a performance perspective, because obviously the performance went with the profile of the property. So that was really exciting. And, um, and then I ended up joining MGM Resorts and we were, um, that again was a really pivotal time for me um, because I, I stepped away largely from a, uh, from a sort of a micro slash Fidelio environment that had been very central to my career up until that point. Uh, to a completely new product, which was based on Microsoft, based on ERP, um, as well as doing this with MGM, MGM Resorts, which of course was, uh, 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 as much as they're a, a, a hospitality company, best known for their gaming operations. So building casinos and building, building you know, hotels and resorts around that, but moving from what had always been the the sort of point based product model of the hospitality industry. And into where, a where were you doing product. that out of? Because you were focused uh, in Las Vegas. Yeah, I, it was I, out of Las Vegas because I I, yeah. I had a for some reason in my mind I had you also involved with MGM out of Asia Pack. <laughs> yeah, well that's right. So so we you know so the company obviously is based in Las Vegas and I was based in Las Vegas. Mm at that time, but we were opening, um, you know, hotels, resorts and, and casinos all over the world. Mm. So, so, you know, these were new development properties, just like any other right. uh, hotel management group, basically. But um, the exciting thing about that was, you know, at least to the best of my knowledge for the perhaps the first time ever, a, a true single product to run the entire business of hospitality. So if you think about all the core front of house functions and all the core back of house functions that we provide technology today for as technologists, right? All of that 
was in a single product. So single customer profile, all of the products and services being sold inside the same module, but not only the front of house, linking through to full supply chain, uh, full flow through to the financial systems, which of course was, was unheard of at that time. So I, you know, I worked with MGM Deploy. It wasn't easy by any means because it's such a huge shift and hoteliers don't change easily. Um, but again, it took all of the learning that I've had to just a, a different level again in terms of what's possible when you truly operate your business on a single platform and how that gives you the flexibility to change the entire hospitality model in terms of how you operate, how you engage with the customer, the types of roles that you can set up for staff because they're no longer limited by a, a siloed technology product. You know, they've got this whole uh, palette of capability, functionality and access to them and they could really engage with the guest across the business. And that became the next sort of big layer of learning for me. So anyway, I eventually moved on and I joined Senium, um, which is the product, and, uh, and um, sort of worked with them for a number of years, uh, taking that concept forward, which again, like many things in my career, you know, ha had been, it was sort of very leading edge and very difficult to do. You know, it, it took a lot of um, commitment and passion and, and discipline to to pursue that model in, a, in, an, in an industry where most people were going, well, you know, still going, well, it's got to be point and no one can do it all. Well, you know, I, I certainly knew better by that stage. So you, were, you were, if I'm correct, you were CEO at Senior, right? A COO. Yeah, COO. Number two. So were, you, were you there when the whole uh, takeover from Muse took place? Or was that no, no, you? no. I, uh, I was, I'd been gone for some time by that, that okay. stage. But, um, yeah, so I, I, after that, that was when I, um, I, I moved on and... Um, and uh, started Travatech, um, started Testbed Vegas, um, and, and sort of launched into the, the consulting you know, stage of my career because at that point I sort of thought, well, you know, I've spent half my career leading technology for, for organisations. I've spent half my career delivering you know, enterprise technology for the industry. And, um, and of course, I had my sort of early formative days with, with operations for hospitality. And I thought, well, in today's modern business world, that is the, you know, that is the recipe that, that, that a modern technologist needs to have to be able to um, bring capability to, to operators and, 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 and help the vendor community come into the industry from a more broader understanding of what's possible and what's really hard and you know, how you can find your way into the hospitality industry and the trials and tribulations that came. So, you know, here we are six years later and, and um, you know, I'm enjoying it because I think the thing I, I like the most about it is that I get, I get to, to help people achieve things in their business across a number of different environments and circumstances um, that allow me to sort of really leverage technology, but in all honesty, take me back to my key passion for the industry, which is all about the customer and the guest and the customer service and, and the service experience and the special nature of hospitality. And the art of hospitality. Exactly. You know, and, and that remains the big motivation for me. You know, Technology is very important, but um, but ultimately for me, the, the real driver is the opportunity to deliver better hospitality, and that's you know what I try to strive through. So I, you may, maybe from that, you answer my kind of next question, <clears throat> which is what what is it that motivates you about our industry today? Given obviously you've just gone through in a summary of what your entire career has been over thirty plus years. So what is it that keeps getting Mark Fancourt out of bed every morning and motivated and driven to keep going and, and doing what he does? Yeah, well, the, um, well, look, technology does that anyway because it changes so often. Um, you know, and, and a combination of the, 
breadth of tools that, that are constantly coming into the industry, some of the amazing capability that, you know, as little as 10 years ago, we probably couldn't have even envisioned. That's part of it. But to be honest, I go back to the same point. I love hospitality and, and a lot of what I aim to do through Travertech um, is to return or deliver the capability that allows us to return to the rich hospitality product and service that our industry is known, has been known for. And, and I say that deliberately because we're at a really interesting juncture in the road for our industry where a lot of the prevailing thought is that we should do less and we should provide less and we should have the guest look after themselves more. And, you know, there's a lot of self-fulfilling prophecy out there that says customers want to serve themselves. Well, I stay in a lot of hotels, you know, I spend a lot of money in hotels and I don't really want to serve myself. But if you're going to force people to serve themselves, then of course it sounds like, uh, it sounds like that's what they want. When in actual fact, with the, the level of technical capability that we have today, we're actually in a position to provide a far richer product and service model than we've ever been able to do in the past in the industry, far more cost effectively, but more importantly, with really interesting jobs for the staff and a much higher level of customer engagement through that process. And that's what, that's what I'm really passionate about. That's what I'm focused on. And, and, and if I can help my customers increase the value of their business because they're able to deliver a better hospitality and service product, then I'm meeting sort of the objectives that I've set out for, for Travertech. On the other side of that coin, what are some of the things that you find uh, that kind of grinds your gears a little bit within the industry? What is it that annoys you? Where do you feel like you just kind of say to yourself, uh, why, 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 why are you doing it like that? Why do you want to do it like that? You know, we speak privately about certain things, yep. but, but from, from, you know, your seat now, what is it that you think are some of the things that the industry can really avoid doing that is kind of just unnecessary? Well, the, 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 there's so much opportunity and, and, and yet we seem to be at a fairly broad scale looking for ways to do less. And none of that, to my mind, makes any sense at all based on the level of capability that's come to pass that didn't exist 10 years ago. So, so if you think about capability turned into product and brought to life with service in the hospitality industry, why is it that we've got more technology capability than we've ever had and yet we're focused on delivering less product and less service than we ever had. None of that makes any sense to me. So, so as a hotelier, which I consider myself to be first and foremost, that bothers me. Because well, some, some would argue that the, it's actually because of that, that that hotels can provide more service, just service that is more directed and focused towards the guest in the end rather than just doing the, the bare necessities, the, the dotting the I's and crossing the T's, whereby the guests a lot of the time may feel that the service is lacking. Well, They're I just think, another number. Yeah, but I think, I think there's an opportunity here for us to change the paradigm of what, what the industry looks like and what product and service looks like, not rely on the same things that we've always been doing. And I don't think it's a particular win for industry that the guests can check themselves in. I see that as a failing. I, I, I look because. at our industry and I say, really? So these are some of the fundamental services that we provide as part of our businesses, saying hello and welcoming the customer and taking the, the burden off them in that process because that's what they're paying money for, is for us to look after them, 
not them to look after themselves. And yet we seem to be doing everything we can to ask the guest to do it all themselves. Now, lots of people will say to you, well, it's all about whether it's luxury or it's limited. So, no, it's not. It's not. Because the technology doesn't know what type of hotel it's in, right? And, and, and you know, there's been points in my career when I've had discussions about, in actual fact, there should be more technology in a lower class of hotel. Mm, I, I would agree. Right. I was just going to say, I think the, the argument that people are coming from, from that perspective is that the the more technology you can provide in in a um, more of a, a, a lower service standard of hotel, uh, thereby giving the guests the opportunity to essentially care for themselves, <laughs> check themselves into the... You wouldn't want that in a Ritz-Carlton, for example, or a Peninsula. I don't think that's the technology that would be accepted into those environments. And, and yet it needs to be. And, and, and to you mean your, self-check-in? Well, to your point, right, the, the, my view on all things hospitality has always been that the things we do should be guest oriented in terms of what is good for the guest or what opportunities or options do you want to offer the guest as choices. Now, I understand that people like the opportunity to digital check in, for example. I understand that, but not everyone does. And if you look at certain parts of our broader travel and hospitality industry today where we're forced to do it, whether we want to or not, is that where we're going as a hospitality? And, and if we are going there, can we generally, genuinely say as an industry, well, we're all about hospitality because I don't see any hospitality in that. You know, hospitality is the human part of, of our industry. And, and if we remove the human, then we've removed hospitality and we just become accommodation or as I sometimes say, a dormitory. Hmm. Well, do, do we want to be in the global dormitory management business as an industry? I don't think so because there isn't a whole lot of value add in that for a customer. So, you know, lots of people said, well, luxury this. And, and you, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that because as I said before, Technology doesn't know where it is. It's, it's an active choice for us as an industry to reduce product and reduce service. And we're actively taking that choice in a lot of places in our industry when all the tools in the world are available for us to do even more for the customer than we've ever done at any point in our industry's history. So I feel like we're, we're at this point in the road where we should be saying, let's restore the glory of our industry. And we're actually going the other way. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, well, as well, I, I, I'll leave it with this. Does anyone really like the, op the experience, the, the service experience they get from an airlines today? Is that the future of the hospitality industry? You're kind of answering then the next question in, in that, which is where are we going wrong as an industry? Well, I just don't, I, I, I think, I don't think that we're seeing the full opportunities that are available to us. And it's not, it's not just about technology. It's about the combination of technology and, and everything that goes around it. But there's an opportunity here for us to reinvent hospitality as we've known it for the better. And, and, you know, some people would say the better looks like doing less and making more money. Well, look, we're all commercial. We all understand the, the need to, 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 to drive good, good revenue streams and, and flow throughs to the bottom line. But at the end of the day, if, we, if we're going to give up the substance of the industry to do that, then the only thing we've really lost is an industry, in, in my view. So... So I just think there's a, you know, and I don't know if it's because, you know, broader leadership isn't as exposed or as, or as educated in what's possible with the tool sets today, 
or some of it's a hangover from the ways that we used to think about doing things and it hasn't quite transitioned into the modern world. But you know, one thing I do know is that, that we need to be far more focused on the way the customer sees our industry and they don't see a rooms business and a food and beverage business and events business. They see a hospitality business with lots of products and services to consume but we don't present our business that way, nor do we allow our staff to operate our business that way because our tool sets don't support that either. So our customer has a vision of our, organ of our industry, but our operation doesn't correspond with that vision and we need to close that gap. And if we close that gap, we'll close it to great financial gain and far more improved customer satisfaction levels as a result, but more custom and, and, and better revenue in the future. That's, that's my view of it. Okay, so we got interrupted there. So just coming back, we were talking about what are some of the things that you're striving to achieve in the industry given your current capacity. So um, let's try to wrap that, that piece off before we get to the next, the next question. Mm. Yeah, well, you, one of the things I was, I was talking about is the education component, which is key. Um, yeah, but, but that's always been constant to all of my roles. That there's still a big gap in understanding of the true capabilities of technology today, mm. and and that remains a really important part of my work. The other the other thing that that I'm very focused on is is organisational cohesion. Um, you know, for, for too long as an industry, we've pursued these disparate models. And you know, I, I don't want to suggest that there hasn't been some level of validity to that. But a lot of my success has come through building great relationships and, and leveraging uh, as much technology as I can from individual partners. And what we've seen happen over time and, and is, is very much the, the, the future of technology for the industry is that the technology community who used to be focused on point products is now realising that they have to provide a far more cohesive environment if they're going to help their clients move forward. Right? So that's been my approach for probably almost 20 years at mm -hmm. this point. Um, you know, because uh, your technology relationships are so important in the hospitality industry. At the end of the day, we are consumers of technology. You know, we are not builders of technology and therefore we rely heavily on those, those business relationships and the quality of them. And like anything in life, economies of scale have an impact. And um, so, yeah, that's a big part of, of how I try to help um, you know, my customers uh, improve the cohesion, both from a from a technology asset financial management perspective, but more importantly, through to the actual execution of their business from the perspective of revenue opportunities and from the perspective of how their teams are able to actually act and bring about their own business objectives. Um, and I find that really exciting because that's where I believe competitive advantage is found in the industry. And, and, and you know, for me as a, as a technologist, I've always been heavily focused on competitive advantage as the driver for the, 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 the reason I'm largely doing anything. And I like to try to bring that, that same view to the work that I do with, with Travitex clients. What are some of the factors about our industry that still keeps you really going and makes you feel like, you know, this is just the, the best industry in the world. This is why I'm here. Well, I, I just, I love the, the art of hospitality. And some, but then sometimes when, when we say the art of hospitality, I think it cheapens it because it's more than that. You know, and I think anyone who has been in this industry and has had opportunities to go away from it and yet they're still here knows what I mean by that. It's, it's, it's in you 
and that opportunity to put others first and do something that that can make their environment, their world, their experience better is a really fortunate position to be in and I love it. And, and it, you know, I get to take that feeling that I have for the industry and move that towards the technology side of it, which gives me the opportunity of, I guess, bringing to life the things that I think really matter about, that the essence of hospitality and bringing a tool set in that can allow industry to deliver that. And that sits very, very deeply at the root of the Travatech approach on most things. You know, it's not necessarily a, a, spoken, a spoken rule, but it's definitely a maxim of how I try to uh, bring technology to the table. Because at the end of the day, technology is just a platform, right? The, it's the, the business of hospitality we're offer, offering and it's a set of products that are brought to life by service. And the job is to make sure that the tool set can sell those products and give, give hospitality operators and the opportunity to deliver great service that, that makes those products even more valuable than they are standing on their own. Um, which is why I think the service aspect of industry and the touch side of our industry is, is fundamentally important to not only future revenue streams, but future revenue growth. Um, so that's, you know, that, and there's, we're only scratching the surface, you know, there's, there's infinite opportunity to keep that moving in the most positive ways forwards, which will be good for everyone as we talk about, you know, that the way that the hospitality operator faces the customer in a true alignment of how they see the business and how we can deliver the business back to them as compared to the way it's been for the last, let's say, 30, 30 to 40 years. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily sure that a lot of people truly understand that or have, see the vision for it, but, but I certainly do. And, um, you know, I aim to sort of bring a much more cohesive environment to play than perhaps has usually been done in the past with hospitality um, business platform. So that's that that's what I love. That's what keeps me going. Um, yeah, you know, the other side of it, of course, is that yeah, you know, the, the 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 extent of tools that are available now, both specific for industry, but the other thing that I get really excited about is is lifting my clients out of industry into truly world-class technology platforms for all the benefits that that brings um, because we're at that stage now and, and because the enterprise platforms that used to be out of bounds for the hospitality industry are now very much in bounds and some of them are even trying to come back down that spout. And that's, that's extremely exciting for the, for the, the future uh, method of how you know we'll be able to run our industry um, for the benefit of everyone involved. So, what is it that you feel differentiates you and what you do from your competitors? Well, I, I think you know I I, um, I credit all of it to the career opportunities that I happen to have, um, and you know I mean. I, I'm not sure that it was necessarily um, necessarily a master plan by any means, but I just happened to have been involved in a lot of uh, sort of throughout my career. I tend to be involved in a lot of leading edge um, initiatives uh, around sort of hospitality slash technology. And I'm not necessarily saying it was that it was myself who brought those to pass. It wasn't. I just happened to be in uh, places at the right time to do so. You know, the birth of Fidelia. I mean, that was a massive opportunity, as anyone who was involved in Fidelia will tell you. But then that moving on to the, the, the beginnings of, of enterprise technology for the hospitality industry and everything that that brought to a world that you know, 25 years later now is truly starting to understand what enterprise technology really means. 
you know, r robust revenue management technology in in the in the nineties, um, whereas you know some still can't deliver that today. Um, you know the 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 opportunity to um, sort of come out of that experience and then then run technology for hospitality organisations with this sort of step ahead of sort of the, where most of technology was focused for the hospitality industry versus what I was focused on. So it just sort of kept me moving ahead of um, yeah, what most people are doing in the market and also my willingness to try to do those things because I do see it as competitive advantage. And if you can create that competitive advantage, it lasts for a really long time. And, and in our industry where we all have beds and we all have restaurants and we all have meeting spaces, you need every opportunity that you can get and you can get a lot through technology. So, um, you know, the, the, the all-in-one single business platform where I, where I both was the person bringing it to my own organisation and, and, and helping to design the way we ran industry in a totally different paradigm to the way things have traditionally been, and then being on the other side of the table and, 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 and sort of formulating you know, how that moves forward in the future. So these were just really unique opportunities that you know, not necessarily everyone had the chance to do, and some people you know, still haven't had that today just because a lot of technology hasn't kept up with those sorts of capabilities, just created a, a circumstance where I just uh, I just probably see things a little bit differently um, to a lot of people and it so happens that the combination of my experience as a result of the things that I necess I had to do in my roles just uh, created a really positive environment for me to vision technology um, a little bit differently to the to way people even talk about it now. The other side of it, you know, which I, I never lose sight of, um, is is that you know I'm a fundamental believer in the necessity to understand the business of hospitality to be able to successfully bring it to life with technology, and and I'm forever grateful for that. And uh, and I know that whatever else I've learned, it's that at the core that allows the rest of it to bubble up through, you know, into business platforms and commercial platforms that. Um, that you know, perhaps others might not have had the experience or, or or the necessity to have to bring to the table. So, so you know, I I, I feel very fortunate um, for the opportunities I've had, and and also for the people that that gave me those opportunities because they are um, you know deeply responsible for my achievements today. Michael Ferry, Stefan Peringer, you know, these these are two people that have you know probably largely set me up for everything I've done to date, you know. So, um, so yeah, it's been, you know, I've been lucky and I appreciate it. Mm. Nice. Okay. Final question. I uh, was recently at an event and there was a panel where one of the members on the panel was a relatively high profile industry figure. And I've heard this person say that the way that hotels are operating uh, specifically around a, a front office level, front desk level, the, the terminology used is broken and wrong. And, you know, saying that essentially that the one vendor model is not a realistic model anymore for hotels, that the marketplace model is the way to go, that hotels should be able to literally just pick and choose the, the services and the applications that they want from it within the marketplace and you know, have the flexibility and the freedom to bring it into their environment and to kick it out when they want. Now, there's pros and cons to that, in my opinion. There's pros and cons to that. I don't think that model is particularly conducive to a large-scale corporate chain environment where there's thousands of hotels, thousands of employees, security standards, all different corporate standards that need to be met. In your opinion, do you see a world where ultimately a one-size model fits all works 
for the industry or do you think that the industry is forcing itself almost or being driven down the road of we have to work within a marketplace environment? If you were to ask someone from a chain level, you'd get a very different response to that of the industry is broken and the way they're working is effectively wrong. I thought they were harsh words to use. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with them because I just didn't think that they fit into the dynamic of what our industry is today. And when you look at it from a spectrum, ours is an industry that focuses on mum and pup operations all the way up to large scale chain. Wow. Tell me how a one size model fits all of those environments and tell me how a marketplace model fits all those environments. I don't know that it really does. I think it needs to be, I guess what I'm trying to say is I just don't think people should be so stubborn in their mindset. Be a little bit more flexible in terms of what ultimately the industry needs and don't try to force the industry down a hole or in a direction that may not necessarily fit every aspect of the industry. Well, look, I mean, you know, I mean, one of the tough things about the hospitality industry when you talk about it is that it spans exactly what you just described. So, so when, when you might make a statement like that, well, in truth, the, the, the real question is, well, what do you mean by that? Because we have to sort of isolate it down to the different parts of industry, which is small rooms only right through to global groups of rich product and service resorts, right? And that's probably, or, or even from my old world, rich product and service resorts plus gaming, right? Or cruise ships, right? Because they're in the same space. So, so yeah, I mean, not, you know, not being part of the discussion, you know, in the context of, but at the end of the day, I think my point is that, well, it depends on what you're talking about, right? Are you talking about just small rooms only hotels? Are you talking about rooms plus dining or rooms plus dining plus events or rooms plus dining plus events plus lifestyle or rooms plus dining plus events plus lifestyle plus retail plus activities and whoever knows what else gaming into, you know, large scale entertainment venues. So now that's one side of that. Well, the, the, the funny thing about it is that I happen to be one person who has actually <laughs> delivered single almost you know almost almost single business platforms that can run the top end of that side of the industry as well as the bottom end so can can it be done yes absolutely it can be done uh, there's people who who've done it and have been doing it for a very long time you know it's not new um, it wasn't new when i started doing it you know i was just yeah, sort of someone who came along to it at that point in my career and probably on a different scale. So just to, um, so just to clarify, when you say can it be done, you, you're you referring now to the one size model fits all. The, the one technology product with comprehensive functionality yeah. can fit all. Yeah. So, so to use your point um, as a, you know, say I'm, say I'm Marriott, right? And I've got... Um, um, oh, I'm going to fail on the, the, the sort of the, the, the brand product names, but say I've got a Ritz Carlton here, rich product and service, and some of the Ritz Carlton products even have casino, right, in certain parts of the world. And then on the other end, I've got um, a courtyard. Thanks. Um, I've got a courtyard. Well, they all have rooms. And certainly my, my product experience, the product that I was using at the time, could just do rooms and it could do this too. So, so, so is that possible? It is possible. Do people tend to do it? Not really. Not, no. not because the, they can't, but more because of, I think, the fact that, uh, you know, the technology community has got a lot to responsibility for this, for, you know, barraging people saying you can't have a single product. Well, you can, right? There might be some drawbacks, but you can have it. So, so that would be the, the first answer that it is entirely possible to do that. And I've been involved in doing the same. So I can speak to that with some experience. Now, 
a marketplace. Well, it's always been a marketplace. It's just a question of how you're consuming technology. I mean, it was a marketplace when you and I were working, you know, back in our technology leadership roles. It just wasn't all in one website, you know. It's still a marketplace. We're still buying technology from a marketplace and that marketplace is still having the need today to be able to interconnect sure. with each other. Look, I mean, I think some, you know, something that needs to be said is going back to the, the I mean, the, the way the hospitality industry does what it does. Well, you know, I've been around the industry for a long time and it's very interesting to me that even today, after you know thirty plus years of being directly involved in hospitality process and execution of, of, of operational businesses, that very little has changed. And you know, some could argue maybe that's wrong, maybe that's right. But the fundamental processes that we go through as hoteliers really remain the same. I think the the one thing that has changed is that the customer um, has an ability to do some of these processes themselves, but the processes remain the same. So really, as I look at it and as I speak to my customers about it, the only difference is that you've got a, a, an additional set of users for all of the business functions that we do as an industry. So in the past, I needed to provide uh, let's say a property management system that allowed the reservations team to take reservations and the front of house team to handle arrivals and, and departures and billing and so on and so forth, right? Well, none of that's gone away. And, and, and for the most part, my experience is that neither have the, the core functions, but also neither have the more advanced functions. Right? And a lot of my work more recently has been with vendors who are young and who are new to the industry. And a lot of the time is being spent recovering old ground from established vendors who know what needs to be in place and they don't know and bringing them up to speed. So what that tells me is that the industry hasn't really changed. And, you know, I've certainly been around long enough as a, as, a, as a change maker and a catalyst for change to be able to recognise what is necessary versus what is frivolous. And it's not frivolous. You know, the, the, the same fundamentals are there. The difference now is that if we use the property management system example, now we also have to enable the guest to be able to make a reservation and the guest to be able to check them in. But that process hasn't changed. Same process. Now, should it change? Could it change? Do we need to hold a room for some dates with some pricing? We do. Do we need to assign a room and get some payment details from the guest and give them a method of access to the room? Yes, we do. And I don't really see those things going away. So, so, so uh, you know, Looking at the PMS, I would say, no, things haven't really changed since I was at hotel school. You know, the, the, the addition is the customer facing piece. And everyone's coming to terms with that in their own way. Some it's from directly from their own property management system. Some it's a, it's a layer that needs to lay on the front. Those more enlightened people are, are doing it from a comprehensive digital platform perspective, which is what I do with my clients uh, for many different reasons. But um, so there's that. So, so, you know, I don't think that's changed. And, and, and if anything, I would argue that if we looked at another important sector of the hospitality business, let's look at dining operations. In fact, dining operations are getting more complex. It's not getting less complex because now in modern business driven dining operations, they want that same information, same process that we have in on the room side of the business, in the dining side of the piece of the business. So it's actually getting more complex than it's been before. We're moving from a world in that particular product where you know, we didn't take reservations, right? Now we're getting to a point where I, I went to a restaurant the other night and I had to pay a deposit, right? So that looks very much like rooms business. So that's becoming more complex. You will we'll see the same thing in the lifestyle space as time goes forward. 
and more and more product is able to be distributed, which is something that you know, I work with my clients on not just the distribution of rooms, but the total distribution of all products and services out to the channels that can be supported. So if anything, I'd say that we're needing to do a lot more of everything than we used to do. And I don't think a lot of people sort of really look that far ahead yet, but that's how, how it's going to look moving forward. Going back to the, you know, the topic of you know, the marketplace, look, the, there is a reality that as hard as we all try as, as, as industry technologists, as hard as we try as operators, right, as hard as we try as vendors to get alignment and, you know, having come from organisations where I was able to have total alignment across multiple you know, business functions of the organisation, I fundamentally know the benefit of that. But the bigger you get, the harder that is to achieve. And the other challenge that we have to recognise is the real estate nature of the hospitality industry. You know, people are buying real estate assets, they're, they're not necessarily looking at it as operational hotels and that isn't necessarily their core motivation behind the investment. And that, that yin and yang has always been there and it's probably even more difficult now than it used to be. But one thing I know from direct experience is that the more successful comprehensive hospitality operation is one that operates from a fully in aligned environment because we already know staffing's a problem, training's a problem, you know, guest, you know, standardization of guest experience is a problem. Well, you can't overcome any of those things by having a shotgun approach on your common tool sets to deliver the business. Now, if McDonald's understands that deeply and fundamentally at the core of their business, that, that they know that this is absolutely instrumental to their global business model, when will we come to understand this you know, as, as an industry? Because it is the same challenge and yet they seem to manage it more effectively than we've been able to do in the hospitality industry to date. Um, but what I will say is this, when I, when I work with, when I work with, with a customer you know, on, a, on an ecosystem for their business, which ranges from the entire digital side of, of their business right through to the infrastructure side in a, in a modern in a modern rich product and service hospitality environment you know I'm looking at more than 200 business functions that that I'm providing a technology solution for and that's growing it's not shrinking so what I know is that if we if we are to have any hope whatsoever of being able to effectively steward te technology assets, staff experience, manpower turnover, and some commonality of a customer experience, it's not coming from more technology from more providers. It's coming from less technology. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. It's coming from more technology from less providers, right? And, and that's the future of, of the industry. Now, whether, whether that can ever be one, it, it can't, because when I talk about a number of 200 business functions, it, that's impossible. But, it, you know, for example, I might be able to cross off 25% of, of a total, uh, you know, hospitality operation with a single business function and that's a huge achievement if you can you can do 25 percent of the overall business capability in a single tool that's the models that i pursue and that's the model that's going to have to be pursued more heavily in the future if if we're going to be able to get a handle on some of the other factors that are impacting the hospitality industry so that's what i would say all right, Mark, thank you. Thanks, Mark.